Hello, and welcome to the When Harry Met Ani podcast. This is episode number 13. My name is Emily. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania with my husband and my two cats, Harry Potter and Onyx, hence the name of my podcast, When Harry Met Ani, a pun on When Harry Met Sally. And I am an attorney by day and a knitter and crocheter in my free time. Um, This podcast is mostly about knitting and crocheting and the projects that I have going on and that I've completed and various other random ramblings depending on uh, the time of year or my mood or what I'm into. Um, If you would like to follow me on social media, you can find me on Instagram as at when Harry met Ani, that's O-N-N-I-E, and on Ravelry as Emmeister. Um, I had a goal in 2019 to uh, film and rec- film and edit and post a podcast um, every other week. However, that has not happened this year. I apologize to anybody who has expected me to post post a podcast every other week. Um, I have fallen way behind. My last podcast was almost two months ago, um, but I just. It takes a lot of time to put a podcast together, and also um, I feel a little self-conscious about recording when I haven't made a ton of progress on my projects because that's what this podcast is about. So if I haven't really made a whole lot of progress on knitting and crocheting, then there's not much to say. Um, But thank you so much to anyone who has seen the podcast in the past and is tuning in for another episode. And to anyone who is joining me for the first time, uh, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. If you like this video, please feel free to like it, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel if you would like to get notified when I post a new episode. Um, I'd also like to thank any new subscribers who came over both from the Adventures with Yarn podcast. I know Louise mentioned my name a couple times after we had done our um, our collaboration Q&A video. And also I'd like to thank Catherine Kirby of the Creative You uh, Shine Baby Shine podcast. Um, she mentioned my podcast and also showed off a picture of um, this shawl, me and this shawl, when I went and visited her shop in McSherrystown, Pennsylvania. So thank you, Louise, and thank you, Catherine. Um, I just have one administrative thing to cover before I get into the stuff that I've been working on, and that is to announce the winners of the RBG Cal. So if you're tuning in for the first time and don't know about the RBG Cal, it was a knit along that I hosted at the beginning of this year. It ran for two months and ended um, in mid-March on Ruth Bader Ginsburg's birthday, and um, participants had the choice to knit either the Notorious RBG sweater by Park Williams or the Descent Cardigan by Andrea Wrangle. And I am pleased to announce that um, we had three opportunities to win and three winners have been selected. So um, winners of that cow will receive this mug. And I keep forgetting to mention this, but I own this mug and my dad is a big tarot fan and actually found this mug on Amazon years ago and originally directed me to it and suggested that this be one of the prizes for the RBG Cal. So um, the three winners will each get a Ruth Bader Ginsburg Justice Tarot Card mug. And then every winner will also get a Notions pouch by Awesome Bags by Awesome Granny, who has generously um, provided the bags for the knit along. They're beautifully lined. And um, she had four of the same Notions pouch. So I got one for myself and I got one for each of the three winners. So on Instagram, the winner was Suni. Uh, at SUNY Light. She and some members of a yarn shop, I think in Denver, Colorado, knit 
um, did a, a notorious RBG cow. So she posted a picture of her finished object and used the appropriate hashtag. So congratulations, SUNY. Um, on Ravelry, our, winder, our winner was Linda, who knit a beautiful descent cardigan that was just was absolutely magnificent um, and was like a perfect blend of colors. Um, so congratulations, Linda. And on the Legally Stitching Facebook group, our winner was Amanda, who knit a notorious RBG sweater. So congratulations, you three. Um, I will pop your gifts in the mail, hopefully this week. So thank you for being patient as you wait to receive the gifts uh, following the conclusion of the knit along. So that's it for Administrati, and um, I'm going to get into finished objects. I have one finished object since my last podcast, and it is the Owen Hat by Jill Zylinski. So here is the Owen Hat that I knit. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was getting the urge to cast on something small because as you will see everything else I'm working on right now is larger um, sweaters or cows that take a little bit of a long time and I just wanted something quick and I was feeling a little down after a particular day and I had this yarn set aside for this project this was actually on my um, 2019 make nine and the yarn is by Asylum Fibers it is her Silver Goose Base 4-ply, 75% Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% sil Silver Stellina. Um, and this yarn, all four of these colors were originally in a kit that was put out by Shimmer and Whimsy in connection with Christy Glass Knits for her Unicorn Along. I believe it was a shawl that people knit and then took a photograph of at Rhinebeck 2018. Um, I unfortunately never made the the shawl, um, but I had the yarn and I thought it would be perfect once I saw this hat pop up on Instagram and found out that it was a four color DK weight hat. Um, forgive the ends, I still have to weave them in, um, but it's a gorgeous color work pattern and I was really excited to work more on my color work tension. Um, here are my, again, I have to weave in the ends on this side, but uh, here are my floats. I thought they came out pretty well. And I followed the advice of, um, I believe it was Angie on the Knitter Next Door podcast. I think it was one of her older episodes who was talking about a tip that she had seen on, I believe it was Ellie from the Skein Deer Knits podcast talking about how whenever she knits color work, in between colors, she gives... Um, before continuing on with a color that she had done previously, she, she kind of like pulls the stitches, the live stitches on the right hand needle before continuing with the color to give it um, a little bit of a, uh, a g more give for the, the float, even though I guess, you know, I'm not, I wasn't catching floats, but there was, there were still, you know, um, floats of color that lasted four or five stitches. But um, this pattern was just so fun. It sped along so quickly. I finished this in less than a week. Um, I just had so much fun seeing what colors were coming next and how it was going to work up with the colors that I chose. Um, and what else do I want to say about this? I knit the adult medium. In hindsight, I do wish I had knit the adult large. I will throw this on so you could see the fit. Um, so it's pretty fitted and it doesn't, um, I don't get pulling. It's not, I, I left enough, um, I, I, I was able to work my tension well enough that it's not, um, the colors aren't pulling, but it is a snug fit. It is a beanie, um, not a slouchy hat, which I think the pattern in the pictures looks more slouchy because, um, I cut, I cut the last part short with this with this um with this green color but anyway um i also wanted to talk a little bit about the bag that i had been using while i was knitting the hat so this is the bag i was using and I had all my yarn in it's a bag by rock solid designs um and she's a local to me bag designer who i've seen at a couple yarn festivals 
at this point. And um, they, she has snaps on her bag instead of a zipper, which is really cool because you can you can sneak your yarn in between the snaps and just keep your yarn in the bag while you're working. Um, I have to say though, it was a four color hat and I pretty much needed to have all four colors on hand because they're the, the colors change so often that um, I was never going long enough without using one of the colors. So, as you can see, it's a pretty snug fit in here for all, for all four of those cakes. With three, it would have been a lot more comfortable, but once I would put the project in here and button it up, it was really struggling for, for room. So, um, probably would have used a different bag in hindsight, but I just love this bag so much with the different kinds of beer. And I'll show you these colors. Um, again, Asylum Fibers, so I used this. This is on the brim. Uh, the pink color is this color. And look at that lovely Stellina sparkle. And I had the yellow. And then this green color, which actually at some, some points was pooling a little bit in the same color as the blue which was, um, I probably would have preferred that it, it didn't in certain spots. Um, I think I, I can show you on here what I mean. Yeah, so, I mean, it's very, it's not noticeable too, too much, but like right there, it just looks like I snuck in some of that blue color instead of it being the green. Um, and you can see a little bit up on um, the top of the hat that it has that blue um, coming through a little bit more than I would have liked. But overall, I loved making this hat. Um, I can check one off of my top nine. I will probably add a pom-pom. So I have a, a, a bag of like eight fur, faux fur pom-poms. I believe I bought them on Amazon. And there's one that's like this kind of off yellow color that I think would be perfect on this and really bring out the kind of the mustardy color that made its way in here. So that is the Owen hat by Jill Zylinski. I'll move on to works in progress. My first work in progress is the Notorious RBG by Park Williams. It is living in this project bag by NSP Designs. If you've been or with the podcast a while, um, you will recognize this bag as well as some of the other ones I have of hers. I really like her bags. Um, I especially like the medium sized bags. This is her large bag and I, I wish it had a zipper instead of the drawstring because I have had to um, fix the drawstring and re-snake it through the lining. Um, but that only happened once and I just like a zipper. So for when I last recorded, which was at the beginning of March, I was here in the body. This is a bottom up sweater um, and now I'm here. So just a word about this. Um, I was trying to figure out how to make this sweater something between cropped and like a mid hip length sweater. And I took my measurements and based on the pattern, this is where I should stop and continue on, um, continue on the rest of the sweater. However, this seems a little bit too short for me, even though it has you stop the body. I think it was two inches before the underarms. So I'm gonna have to revisit that and honestly, I think that's why I've shied away from this a little bit is because I'm just really nervous about not doing it right, you know, and not having a length that I really like and that flatters me. I've decided that the crop top or the crop sweater look is not something that I think would look good on me. I don't really wear high-waisted jeans. If anything, I would like it to kind of cover any kind of... Um, belt area on a pair of jeans. So I don't I don't usually wear a belt, uh, but I don't want it to be super long either. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just measure this against a shirt or sweater that I like where it hits me 
um, in terms of between my waist and my mid hip. So just where I like it. Um, and go from there in continuing the body or starting the next section. So unfortunately not too much progress on this and it is a black sweater so not super duper interesting. Um, the yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool um, and the colors that I'll be using are, I think this is coal, and then uh, for the yoke, that is supposed to mimic um, a collar that a judge would wear, as Ruth Bader Ginsburg wears on, at, uh, on the Supreme Court. Um, that will be in white. So if all else fails, I can always rip back a little bit, and I would probably err on the side of making it too long rather than too short. So that is my progress on the Notorious RBG. Um, here is the super cute progress keeper that I got from Louise. I always forget who makes this progress keeper. But all of my notes are in the, dis the video description below. So look for all the notes that I have for all of my projects. I try to provide pretty detailed notes there. And I will, again, because I forget in the video, um, put, put in the description where that progress keeper is from. So that is my Notorious RPG. My next work in progress is one that hasn't made an appearance on the podcast in quite some time, but I'm still working on it. It is the um, Annalise Wrap Shawl by Loop Knits, and it's living in this project bag by NSP Designs. Um, it is my rainbow colored asymmetrical wrap and I actually had a little bit of a sad story about this. Um, I've been trying to see the movie Pet Cemetery for, I get I, it might even be out of the theater at this point, but um, I tried to go with my parents and it was essentially sold out. And then I tried to go by myself and I actually got in the movie theater and then there were a bunch of obnoxious teenagers who walked in like 15 minutes at the be 15 minutes after the movie started and I was just like I can't I can't do this but I had brought my knitting because um I am I on that part yet am I on the fade I think I have just finished the fade of the um turquoise into the blue and now I'm just on the blue part. So that's why I brought this to the movie theater was because I would have just needed to do um, the, the block of the blue. And it's like 30 rows for each solid color panel. But um, yeah, so I just thought I'd show you my progress on this. So you'll notice now I have blue faded in and after the blue um, will be purple and then it will be done. But here it is. I know I haven't showed this for a while, but I, I think this would be a great summertime shawl. So I am eager to finish this and I really, really do need to just like commit a couple evenings to it and, and finish it. More than a couple, It'll probably be a few or, you know, five or six. But um, yeah, so that's the Annalise Wrap Shawl. The yarn is um, uh, Knitted Wit, right? It's been so long. Yes, Knitted Wit Victory Fingering, 100% Superwash Merino, and the set, the color set was the Rock Candy set. Um, and it, it, I bought it from Loop Yarn in Philadelphia. The pattern is by Loop Knits. And that's it. There's not much more to say about this other than I'm really excited for it to be done. Uh, I believe I've been working on this since the first episode of the podcast, so it, it needs to, it needs to be done. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That is, that's the Annalise Wrap Shawl. Next work in progress is the Vignette Cowl by Suvi Samola. Here is a picture of it. And this is a cowl with really nice braided cable detail all around. Um, I am doing this as a knit along with my mom and I am helping her through the cabled section as she has never done cables before um, but she started the cable section and so far so good so my project is living in this bag it is by um, bag lady Kathleen I actually won this bag 
in a giveaway that was hosted by the Drunk Knitter Podcast, so thank you, Sophia. So here is my cowl so far. I have gotten pretty far in the cabling, and I am about halfway through. Um, once you get started, it's really simple because once you establish one cable repeat, you can tell what stitches you need to do. However, in the beginning, I found it really difficult to keep the right amount of stitches on my needles, which I'm not exactly sure why that was happening. I was constantly getting the wrong count. Um, so I think, you know, if I had to knit this again, I would probably add uh, stitch markers after the, each repeat section just to make sure that I was, I had more, um, more checkpoints for myself for each row. But it's working up really nicely. I love the yarn I'm using. Um, I'm using the Fiber Company. This is how much I have left on my first skein. Um, but here's the second one. And it is the Fiber Company. Acadia DK in sand. It's 145 yards per skein. The pattern, the pattern calls for 290 yards. So I bought two of these. We will see if I can make it. Uh, work with two skeins. Um, I hope I don't have to buy more, but who knows? If I have to buy more, I will. Um, the the yarn is 60% merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, and 20% silk. And my mom is using the Alpaca Yarn Company in classic alpaca tweed. It's this really pretty ruby tweed color, and that is 85% baby alpaca and 15% Donegal. So. I'll just give you one last look at this. It's pretty fun. Um, it does take a while though because the, the cabling is pretty tedious and there are a lot of, of cables in that cable row. Um, so when you get to one, it, it's a real, it's a real, uh, it, it, it makes things pretty slow um, to get through that, that row. And it is a four row repeat. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking this and I look forward to it being finished. Last but not least is a project that is living in a new to me project bag. This is a project bag by Tani Casey. Um, this is her Alice in Wonderland extra large zippered bag. I'll talk a little bit more about this bag in the prime time section, but in this bag is a test knit that I'm doing. Um, here's the pattern. It's called the Waffle Tea. It's by Carrie Helene Rain. I agreed to test knit this. However, the original deadline was March 30th. I guess a lot of people were having difficulty with that deadline and then Carrie kind of made a, you know, um, just whenever you can do it, please, please let me know and keep working on it. Unfortunately, I ordered yarn that was called for in the pattern that had to come from the United Kingdom. So it took about two weeks for me to get the yarn in the mail. So I only really started this at the beginning of April. Um, and, and, and then I was, I was trying to be a good test knitter and swatch. So I did a swatch. Um, here's the swatch. And I got gauge with the, I believe it's a size eight and the yarn is fingering weight. Um, it is John Arbor textiles knit by numbers four ply and it's in the number 31. It is hundred percent pure Falklands Merino wool. I had to buy three skeins and it's 400 meters per skein. And I am not very far in this. And in fact, I told Carrie, I said, look, I'm really sorry, but um, I do not think I'm gonna finish this in any, any reasonable amount of time. Um, and she said, that's okay. Just have comments to me before the pattern releases on May 16th. So I'm going to try my best to at least get through the body. It's a bottom up top and start the um, the like waffle pattern and and see how far I get. Um, I think that whatever feedback I have for her would be helpful in that regard. But here's where I am. So not too much to report. Um, you have the option to either knit it kind of like in panels or you can just knit knit the knit it from the bottom up in a tube and then deal with the back and the front later. So I opted to do the um, just circular knitting for the bottom, the body of the top. 
but that's all I have right now. Um, so about three rows in. Hopefully I'll make more progress on this. It is pretty easy going right now. I wanted to just say a few words about test knitting and see if anyone else um, is kind of having the same feelings that I have about it. But um, I've agreed on a few occasions to test knit projects. Um, a hat, a pair of mittens, a short sleeve tank top, and now this short sleeve t-shirt. And while test knitting is a very appealing at the very beginning when I sign up to do something, I have decided that this t-shirt test knit is going to be the last one for me. Um, it's great to get an advanced copy of the pattern. Usually the designers are willing to give the pattern for free to their test knitters. Um, but it just, it sounds great when I sign up, but then I just inevitably, it starts to feel like work for me and not fun and I wanna work on other things. Um, and then I have to reach out to the designer because I'm not sticking with the deadline. Um, actually, in the one test net that I had signed up for, it was just totally beyond my skill level when I signed up to do it. It was There was lace work involved, there were short rows, I didn't even really know how to do a gauge swatch. So, um, you know, I had to tell the designer in that case, hey, I'm really sorry, but this is just beyond my skill level, I can't do this. Um, and even for, for this va waffle tea, I, I think it's totally within my wheelhouse. It's just, I have so many other things that I want to pick up and make. Um, as, as you can see, I knit that, that Owen hat in five days, um, just because I wanted to do something different and something that was on my mind and cast on spontaneously. So those are my feelings about test knitting right now. I think, I think that, um, while it's a great option for some to get pattern, get advanced copies of patterns and help a designer out and, um, you know, be, be kind of the first one to, t to knit something or crochet something. Um, I think for me, it just turns, it, it just makes it a little bit more of an obligation and, and I just, I don't want that, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to do my very best to finish the waffle tea, but after that, it'll just be knitting on my own terms, and uh, no matter what the temptation, because I follow the test knitting hashtags on Instagram, and I'm a member of Yarn Pond, and, and I just want to knit so many things, but I just have too much, you know, squirrel uh, style to my knitting and crocheting that um, I don't I don't think it's for me, but... So there's my rant on test knitting for what it's worth. <laughs> so for my prime time segment this week, I have a special edition. I went to the Allentown Fiber Festival um, on April 15th with my parents um, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, about an hour and 15 minutes north of where I live. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I persuaded my parents to go with me. Um, they were happy to go. We ate at a really awesome diner afterwards. And I, of course, made purchases as you do. So I thought I would share those with you as part of my primetime segment. I went to the Allentown Fiber Festival with a goal in mind. And the goal was to find two skeins that matched this skein for a cafe knitting shawl by Stephen West. And this skein is Dragonfly, Fly, Dragonfly Fibers. Um, damsel sport in titania and so it's a sport weight yarn and what i found is sport weight yarns aren't super popular options for um indie dyers or local yarn dyers i just think they tend to stick more with the fingering weight and the dk weight um but i did find two skeins that i thought would look awesome in a fade so here's what i picked up so let's talk about the middle one first. So this is by Rita Mae Yarns. Um, Courtney is actually pretty local to me. She's in York, Pennsylvania. I haven't made it to her shop yet, but I really want to go. Um, they seem to have really neat events and like Friday night knit nights, which would be fun to go to. But I saw, I, I chatted with Courtney and her fiance. They were super nice. 
um, and I pulled out this skein and they directed me to their sport weight section and I decided on this. This is Turtle Beach um, on her Petunia Sport Base. So I snagged this puppy to be part of my Stephen West Cafe Knitting Shawl Fade. Then I ventured over to another booth, um, 100 Ravens, and they did not have DK weight yarn, but I saw this color and I fell in love. So um, this is on her veneer DK base, and the color is Honoria. I hope I'm saying that right. And I just thought it would look really good with these other two. And DK is the next weight up from sport, so I thought it probably wouldn't make that much of a difference in a shawl. Um, but now I think maybe I have other plans for this. So I'll talk about that in my Emily's Random Corner section. But um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. But here is my um, planned fade for the Stephen West Cafe Knitting Shawl. I also fell in love with a colorway from 29 Bridges Studio. This is her go-to sock base and the colorway is October and I picked this up just to make socks. Um, I thought it was so gorgeous and I looked at her mini collection and one of my favorite colors is orange and um, hence why I think this skein really spoke to me. It has flecks of orange and purple um, a little bit of blue, just kind of any color of the rainbow, but the orange and yellow is pretty prominent. So I decided to snag these minis to make heels, toes, and cuffs for this, for, for socks out of this color. And then I was watching my uh, dear friend Louise's podcast, uh, The Adventures with Yarn podcast, and she announced that she is going to be doing a mac and cheese slash first socks cow um, geared for people who have never made socks before. And quite honestly, I think I kind of fall into that category because I have made one pair of socks and it was about a year ago. So I could really use a refresher. But um, since it's going to be macaroni and cheese themed, um, I thought this was perfect. So I couldn't believe it. And um, yeah, so zero coordination going on with that. I had this already purchased, but um, yeah, so I'm excited to knit these socks. Um, at some point during the summer, not sure when her knit along is going to start, but this will definitely be the project that I'm going to be knitting for um, the Adventures with Yarn Mac and Cheese slash First Saw Cow. So last but not least was my last and most expensive purchase. And um, once you see this, you will you will notice that um, not only was I spending a lot of green, but I was in a green mood. Um, but I bought a kit from the Sheeper, Sheepy Shire. Um, she had a sample that was knit up in this kit. She had a So Faded by Andrea Mowry and it was out of these colors. <laughs> I could not resist. So this is her fingering weight yarn. Um, all different colors I will. I guess I will go from the dark green to the tan and tell you what they are. So we have Gareth, Poly Juice Potion, Spore, um, Lichen, and Straw into Gold. So, aren't they just beautiful? Uh, I I I had to make it. It's hard to find a fade and. It just was so beautiful. So I was really happy to pick that up. I thought it was a reasonable price. It was $120. Um, and then she also gave me this, the Sheepy Shire pin, which I thought was really cute. <laughs> so that will be an, a uh, cast on that I have in the not too distant future. The So Faded by Andrea Maori because I already have all the colors and it they're beautiful and I love I love the green. Um, so that summarized my purchases from the Allentown Fiber Festival. Now, full disclosure, I am heading tomorrow to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I will be bringing cash. 
and only spending what I bring. So I'm going to try to limit the um, wool piggery as some might say, but I will definitely share a little bit about my experience at Maryland Sheep and Wool on my next podcast. Before I leave you, I have a little bit to discuss in my random corner. Um, so this week, I thought it would be fun to talk about what I am itching to cast on. So as many other people are looking to do, I really, really want to make a Soldatna crop by Caitlin Hunter. Um, it is a four color DK weight cropped sweater, short sleeve, um, cropped. So I have been trying to consider how I can use my stash um, to make this crop top. And I've been, you know, like pinging people on Instagram to help me come up with a color combination. I think I've settled on my color combination. However, the main color I would be using is this 100 Raven skein, which was supposed to be part of my cafe knitting shawl. Um, you know what though? This is DK weight. The shawl's supposed to be sport weight, so maybe I should just hold out for another skein of blue or turquoise or green um, sport weight yarn. That's how I'm justifying this. But anyway, um, right now I think the front runner color combination would be this skein and then Actually, this Asylum Fibers yarn, which I had in my Owen hat, which I feel like I didn't use a lot of, so I was kind of bummed that I didn't use a lot of that, and I thought it would be really neat to have in a um, Soldatna. And then I have two skeins of uh, yarn from Dragon Horde Yarns that I have been looking for a project to incorporate them. I originally started a, um, oof, it was a shawl by Helen Stewart that I'm drawing a blank on the name, but it was a three colored shawl and the quill shawl. Um, and I have three skeins of dragon horde yarn and here's two of them. And I think they would look lovely here. I'll try to do this as best as I can, but I think this would make a lovely color combination for a Soldatna. So let me know what you think. I have some other options on Instagram that I posted. So if you like any of those, feel free to check out my previous post and let me know which one you like best. Um, but yeah, are there any kind of patterns that have come up in the past year where you just drop everything and cast on? Because I, I, I feel like this is one of them for a lot of people and um, I've heard it doesn't take a lot of time because it's short sleeve and it's cropped. So I will probably be casting this on in the very, very near future. But let me know um, if you have any of, of any other ones that were, you know, like drop everything and cast on projects. Um, the only other thing I'll say about this is that uh, Asylum Fibers and someone else, I can't remember what her Instagram name handle is, but they are hosting a Crop It Cowl um, where you can knit a cropped sweater during the month of May. So a lot of people are doing the Soldatna crop and I think a lot of people are doing the My Boy Lollipop crop. Um, lots of rhyming, but uh, yeah. So if I could, you know, get it together in May and start this, I think it would be a great, um, it would be a great knit along opportunity. That's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's good to be back and good to share what's been going on and what's often on my needles. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're getting a lot of knitting and crocheting done and I will see you next time. Bye.